This is Opus 40, a monumental environmental sculpture rising out of an abandoned bluestone quarry in Saugerties, New York. It covers more than six acres. It is made of hundreds of thousands of tons of finely fitted bluestone, constructed stone by stone over a period of 37 years. It is all the work of one man, the sculptor, Harvey Fite. Fite bought his quarry in 1938. The following year, he began work on what would eventually become Opus 40. But when he began clearing the brush and rubble and moving the first stones, his idea was to create a series of pedestals for an outdoor gallery of large carved stone sculpture set in the woods against the powerful backdrop of Overlook Mountain. He connected the pedestals with ramps and surrounded the ramps with terraces. And he built the terraces and ramps around fountains and trees and bushes and quarry pools laced at the bedrock floor with subterranean passageways. The carved sculpture began to be dwarfed by its magnificent setting. And he brought in a new stone he found nearby to carve for a new dominant central piece. The new stone was 15 feet long and weighed close to nine tons. To raise it, Fite used principles he borrowed from the ancient Egyptians. He removed the central figure and dug down four feet into the terrace. The stone was then tipped into the hole and the large end jacked up with a crib of heavy wooden blocks. Then, pulled into a vertical position with a guy wire attached to the winch of Fight's pickup truck. A huge A-frame of 30-foot timbers was raised over the monolith by the same system. The stone was lifted with a chain hoist, and a base was built up beneath it, topped by a three-quarter ton capstone. Finally, the monolith was lowered into place. The monolith was the turning point in Harvey Fite's concept of his quarry masterpiece. He had once had a plan for carving the new stone, but now he realized that Opus 40 had outgrown its original concept. And so he took the carved sculpture off the quarry and placed the statues around the woods and the lawns and the pools nearby. Opus 40 had emerged in its own right. Fight worked alone from the first thaw of spring until the winter snows forced him off his quarry again. He worked with his hands, with traditional quarryman's tools, lifting, sorting, chipping and shaping the bluestone rubble, building walls with infinite patience and artistry. The technique fight used in the building of Opus 40 is called dry key construction. It relies upon the careful fitting of stone upon stone and the pressure of the mass for stability. Large stones called keystones are placed at intervals throughout the walls. They anchor the construction, supporting and held in place by the smaller stones around them. There is no mortar or cement anywhere in the drywall construction. As a result, it is not vulnerable to the ravages of frost heaves and erosion. With the proper care and maintenance, Opus 40 could well be standing thousands of years from now. By the early 1970s, Fite had retired after 30 years as a professor at Bard College. He used his newfound free time to build the Quarrymen's Museum on the grounds. The museum houses Fite's collection of folk tools, artifacts, and household implements used by the 19th century quarrymen of this area. He had created Opus 40 upon the legacy of these working people and their tools. 
and he built his Quarrymen's Museum to honor them. In 1976, as he neared the completion of his massive quarry sculpture, Harvey Fite died in an accident at the age of 72. He was three years short of the 40-year schedule from which he gave Opus 40 its name. He left some unfinished areas. But in a sense, Opus 40 is as complete as it ever would have been. It was the product of Fite's ceaseless vision and could only have been stopped by his death. Since then, Opus 40 has received national acclaim. It was featured in a photographic exhibit on earthworks mounted by the Smithsonian's Hirshhorn Museum, and critic Brendan Gill has called it the greatest earthwork I have ever seen. Opus 40 today is operated by a not-for-profit corporation, Opus 40 Incorporated. It is maintained primarily through tax-deductible contributions. $25 or more brings a year's membership in the Friends of Opus 40. Members are welcome throughout the season, free of admission except for sunset concerts, and are thanked at an annual member's reception and concert. Opus 40 is open to the general public between May and October. Visitors should call 914-246-3400 for open day and special events information. Concerts featuring jazz, pop, folk, and classical musicians play to large crowds on summer evenings at Opus 40. Opus 40 is also open to school and other groups by appointment. <laughs>